What's going on everybody? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, we're doing a build guide on a compact gaming PC based around the new Skylake architecture. Now, the whole uh, reason for this build is pretty much to make a very compact yet powerful and flexible PC based around the new Core i5-6600K processor that won't entirely break the bank, but will give you the most performance when it comes to 1080p and Quad HD gaming, as well as it'll have ample enough power to do some video or photo editing to make Make a sweet little workstation PC and if any of you guys want to go ahead and skip ahead to a specific part of this build guide you can do so by using this little side menu and the cool thing about this PC right now is even though the hardware is fairly new to work natively with Mac OS 10 eventually down the road in the near future this should make a pretty sweet little Hackintosh where you can do a dual boot configuration between Windows 10 and Mac OS 10 El Capitan that should be coming out very very soon but basically Let's see what it takes to build this computer. And uh, if you're a beginner, don't worry, just follow my steps and you should have a pretty sweet machine at the end of this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the parts that we're going to use to make this computer. Now, we're going to be basing everything around the Core i5-6600K. Now, if you recently watched our video where we compared the new Skylake processors to a 6-core Intel 5820K, definitely check out that video if you haven't already. And basically, for gaming, we found out specifically for gaming, there's really not going to be a big difference between a 6600K to a 6700K to even like something like a 5820K 6-core. Or CPU. Basically, gaming is still a GPU dependent task, and it's perfectly fine in using a Core i5 processor in order to do pretty much any kind of gaming that you can imagine. So that's quite fantastic. And with this 14 nanometer architecture, the 6600K is really overclockable. You can easily get this in the mid of four gigahertz range. You can even push it further depending upon what kind of cooler you're going to use. And speaking of cooler, we're going to actually go with a pretty simple water cooling solution, the Corsair Hydro Series H60. This is has been around for quite a while now but it's going to give you plenty of overclocking performance for the price so it's an all-in-one liquid solution and this should be perfect match for our 6600k now in terms of ram we're using the 8 gigabytes ddr4 from corsair this is the lpx memory it's clocked around uh, 3000 megahertz so plenty of speed and uh, 8 gigabytes should be enough for us right now and of course we can upgrade down the road now for our motherboard we're going to be using the z17 om dh3 from gigabyte this is a micro atx board so it's going to fit perfectly with our compact gaming pc idea and the great thing about this board is it comes at a very competitive price point and it offers all the latest features that you're going to find on any z17 o chipset so you have stuff like a ddr4 memory natively built in as well as all the latest stuff like pci express 3.0 sata 3 m.2 connections and plenty of usb type uh, 3 connections as well so lots of uh, excellent features on this board which is going to be great for our overclocking needs as well. Now for our storage solution, we're actually going to be using two types of drives. We're going to be using the HyperX Predator 240GB M.2 memory module. This is an absolute speed demon of an SSD drive. It's going to give us absolutely insane read and write performance. And since our motherboard has built-in M.2 support, it's going to make a nice, tight, integrated package. We're also going to be using the Patriot Ignite 480GB SSD drive. The great thing about this drive is it comes in a pretty affordable price tag uh, considering that it is still an SSD drive and we're going to basically use it for storing games and applications and anything that doesn't fit on our main OS drive. Now for our graphics card we're going to be using the Gigabyte G1 a GTX 960. We're using the uh, 2 gigabyte a DDR5 a version and this is pretty much one of the best graphics cards that you can get for around that $200 mark and in terms of most of its gaming performance you're going to have no problem in terms of playing most of your games at high frame rates at uh, full 1080p resolution and perhaps some quad hd resolution now if you guys are interested in amping up your gaming performance even more the two graphics cards that i would recommend would be the gtx 970 or the r9 390 both of them are going to give you excellent uh, gaming performance in terms of quad hd resolutions and even some 4k gaming stuff so if you have maybe a hundred dollars more to spend definitely check out those two graphics cards now for our psu we're using the evga supernova 750 watt power supply this is an 80 plus 
plus a bronze certified power supply so great in terms of overall efficiency and the price point is very nice as well it's a half modular power supply so most of your important things like your motherboard and your cpu power are hardwired into the psu and everything extra in terms of sata power and uh, graphics card power are individual cables that you can plug in separately now this computer is going to be fairly power efficient you really don't need 750 watts you could easily get away with 500 to 600 watt power supply but the nice thing with uh, having a little bit more is you can add in perhaps another graphics card to kind of double your gaming performance and uh, that way you have some flexibility for the future now the case that we're going to be using to uh, house everything is the cooler master n200 this is basically an matx case so it's going to be excellent to make a fairly compact pc with a huge punch in terms of power and performance and uh, it's a very simple design as you can see it's not very fancy in terms of the internal features that it has but again uh, at the price point you really can't complain now the grand and final total for this pc at the moment cost me about uh, 1267 dollars and 39 cents now of course pricing fluctuates depending on where you are in the world and when you're watching this video but check out the description down below where you'll find the detailed breakdown and pricing of everything we're going to be using to make this computer okay so you saw all the components let's finally build this thing now what you want to make sure you do is uh, to be in a static free work area and you want to make sure you're free of any static discharge what i usually like to do is just touch a uh, metal part of a computer case that's connected to the wall outlet now in terms of the tools and equipment you really don't need anything else but a phillips head screwdriver but it's always nice to have a pair of side cutters and uh, some uh, needle nose pliers from time to time now the first thing that we're going to do is uh, take the uh, box that the motherboard came in and basically place the motherboard right on top of that box and we're going to use this as the build platform so the first thing that we're going to do is just install the ram so we're going to open up the tabs on the ram slots and we're going to basically align each of the ram sticks with the key on the slot itself with the notch on the stick and you want to basically press firmly and evenly on both sides of the ram module until the ram snaps into place and the tab will close automatically you can repeat this step for every other stick of ram that you're going to install we're only going to install two sticks of ram since we have eight gigabytes at the moment now let's install the cp we're going to remove the cover that's on the socket on the motherboard itself and you simply lift that out and you'll be exposed to the socket firstly we want to open up the retention arm that holds this cpu socket in place so what you want to do is just firmly press down on the end of the retention arm and then move it away from the socket and it'll simply lift up and you'll also see the retention bracket lift up and expose the entirety of the cpu socket after that you want to hold the cpu by the ends and identify the two little notches uh, typically located on the top left and right corner of the cpu this will uh, help you align the cpu appropriately you'll also see a little triangle on the bottom left hand corner which again you'll match appropriately to the bottom left hand corner triangle located on the socket itself this part is generally pretty easy you just want to be gentle with everything and make sure your alignment is correct and if it is you can now lower down the retention bracket and also lock into the retention arm in just the reverse order that we used to open it in the first place next what we're going to do is install our m.2 memory module this is basically going to house our operating system and some of our essential applications and uh, you'll see the m.2 located directly onto the motherboard in this gigabyte motherboard it's kind of located right below the cpu so it's pretty straightforward to see and it only goes in one way and once you have your m.2 module connected to the m.2 slot on the board you can just simply secure it with a small screw directly onto your motherboard and this screw typically comes with your motherboard itself and now since we have that installed we can now prep our pc case we're going to remove both side covers and the first thing i like to do is install the motherboard io plate so first you want to make sure your alignment is correct based on the motherboard orientation and uh, you then can just simply install it at the rear end of the case and I like to use the handle of my Phillips head screwdriver to kind of nudge it securely directly onto the case. Next what we're going to do is install the standoff screws that is going to hold our motherboard into the case itself and you want to basically check your motherboard to see what the layout is of the standoff screws themselves so everything's aligned appropriately. Once all your standoff screws are placed in and everything is leveled you can go ahead and place your motherboard right inside that case and it's a good idea to use 
the rear IO plate to kind of align everything perfectly. And now you can simply secure all the screws directly onto the motherboard slash case itself. So we have a nice and proper fit. Next, since we have our motherboard securely into the case, we're going to install our front panel headers and some of our USB connections. Now, in terms of installing the little connectors for your power switch, hard drive activity, light, reset switch, all those things, it uh, is a little bit tricky at times, but again, refer to the manual in terms of their proper orientation. On this Gigabyte motherboard, we actually install all the little connectors individually directly onto the board, and they're nicely labeled on the board as well, but again, refer to the manual if you have any kind of confusion. But once you have all those uh, little connectors in, you can go ahead and install stuff like your USB 2.0, your uh, front panel audio connections, as well as your front USB 3.0 connection directly onto the board itself. Now, once we have all that done, we're going to install our uh, CPU cooler. And the first thing on most of these Corsair coolers is you're going to install the rear backplate. And basically, the backplate is consists of four adjustable screw holes, and you're going to basically match it to the appropriate socket that you have. In most cases, these Corsair coolers are fairly universal for most modern day motherboards. And uh, once you have the uh, holes peeking through out the PCB, on the other side, you're going to install these standoff screws that also came with the cooler itself. And you want to make sure everything is evenly and securely tight on all four corners. And then you can take the water block slash uh, pump that typically has thermal paste already installed. And you want to make sure you're directly above your CPU and you have even contact and go ahead and screw in the thumb screws that came with your cooler onto the standoff screws securing your cooler in place. Next we're going to install the 120 millimeter fan to the radiator and to simply use the long screws that again came with the cooler to install the fan directly onto the radiator. Now you could be innovative in terms of what kind of airflow strategy you're going to use. I'm simply going to use an exhaust method so I'm going to have cold air coming at the front of the case and then this fan will take that hot air and exhaust it out directly through the radiator. The only thing left to do now is install our radiator directly onto the rear end of the case and I'm just going to simply use some thumb screws to secure the radiator at the back of the case. Now you can install the fan and water pump power connections directly onto your board typically where it says CPU fan. Next you want to take your PSU and place it at the bottom of the case and like most PSUs you simply install it by four Phillips screws at the back of the case and thus you can go ahead and connect the power for the 24 pin motherboard connection as well as your 8 pin CPU power. At this point, if you want, you can also install some of your system fans from the case to the motherboard itself, and it'll be powered directly uh, through the 24 pin connection. Moving forward, we're now install our 480 gig SSD drive. And the nice thing is you have a couple of areas where you can place SSD drives in the N200 case. I'm just going to simply uh, install it at the bottom area, uh, easy access for the hard drives if I ever want to swap it out for whatever reason. So I'll screw that right into place and then connect my SATA power and my SATA data transferring cable uh, from the board to the drive itself. And as you can see, installing drives is a pretty simple and straightforward process. Now, last but not least, we're going to install our GPU to our computer. And what you want to do is basically uh, align up the PCI Express connection that we're going to use and then remove the PCI Express covers located on the left hand side and uh, just simply slot the GPU into that uh, 16x 3.0 slot. And then you can secure the GPU onto the case using the two screws that we use to remove the covers and uh, simply install your two six pin power connections coming from uh, the power supply to the graphics card itself. And that's pretty much it. If you've gotten to this point, you've now built your computer and you're ready to install your operating system and install all your applications and your games. Now let's get into some of the benchmarking and performance results that we got out of this little compact PC. Now in terms of the overclock ability, you can definitely overclock this thing to around uh, 4.7 gigahertz at around uh, 1.38 volts. And based on our cooler, you really don't see the temperature go beyond 75 degrees Celsius, which is definitely nice to see. We can probably even optimize uh, this system even more, uh, given a little bit more time. And plus uh, down the road, you can probably upgrade the uh, water cooling system to a custom water cooling loop with a uh, even larger radiator for better heat dissipation. Now in terms of power efficiency, uh, to test out the real world power consumption, I basically played Grand Theft Auto 5 for for about 45 minutes and out of the wall the computer didn't draw anything more than uh, around 364 watts which is definitely very nice to see there uh, with the new Skylake architecture uh, power efficiency is also up and we can see that example right over here now in terms of CPU specific performance we'll start with a Cinebench R15 benchmark and based on 
on our overclock setting about 4.7 gigahertz our 6600k scores about 780 points which is uh, definitely impressive to see that's almost to the performance of what we found some last generation core i7 processors so uh, you're pretty much getting the power of uh, the previous generation core i7s in this new core i5 in terms of the geekbench 3 performance test the multi-core score scored around 16,000 points and the single core was about 5100 points so definitely very impressive to see there and moving on another great thing about this computer is how fast the sequential read and write performance is thanks to our m.2 uh, predator hyper x ssd drive so with a uh, crystal disk mark you're getting about 1.5 gigabytes per second in terms of sequential read speeds and over 650 megabytes per second in terms of sequential write speeds so this system is definitely faster than any kind of 2.5 inch sata 3 drive you can install there's only a handful of consumer drives that can really co compete with this m.2 in terms of read and write performance and uh, this is probably the best when it comes to the value aspect of things now let's take a look at the graphical performance of this pc we'll start with a synthetic benchmark using unigen's uh, heaven benchmark at at uh, 1080p ultra settings four times anti-aliasing with our gigabyte g1 gtx 960 we're getting about an average transfer second about 45.7 and a score about 1151 and moving on in terms of real world gameplay performance at Far Cry 4 Ultra 2X MSAA at uh, 1080p you're getting about 46.2 average frames per second according to Fraps and at uh, Quad HD resolution you're getting about 30.4 frames per second. Moving on to Call of Duty Advanced Warfare at full maxed out settings FXAA at uh, 1080p you're getting 81.6 average frames per second and at Quad HD you're getting about 57.8 frames per second. Moving on to Dragon Age Inquisition at ultra settings, two times MSAA at 1080p, you're getting a very playable 47.2 average frames per second, and at Quad HD, about 28.6 average frames per second. So, even if you're going to be using this computer on a Quad HD monitor, you're still going to be able to play most of your games at fairly playable frame rates. And the great thing about this platform is if you do want better gaming performance, go pick up a GTX 970 or an R9 390, as we mentioned earlier and with really either of those gpus you're going to see a massive improvement in terms of your gaming performance and you're going to have the ability to do 4k gaming if you so desire but at this level i think this is at a great price point of just around that 1200 dollars mark where i think you're getting the best of kind of everything uh, while having that flexibility to upgrade down the road but really on that guys that's really it definitely check out the description down below you'll find the detailed specifications uh pricing about all the components we use to make this computer happen Happen. and if you want to help support our channel go through our Amazon link doesn't cost you anything extra when you get something through our affiliate link but it just helps make videos like this possible we definitely love to thank all you guys that that do so on a regular basis and also like the videos uh, as consistently as some of you guys do so thank you again for your support and if you guys are interested are on a more higher end level PC we actually have a build guide on the knee 6700 K coupled with a GTX 980 Ti so if you're looking for for the best of the best that's a great pc that will pretty much blow your mind in terms of its performance so definitely check out that video out if you haven't already but uh, that's really it for this video thanks again for watching we'll see you later take care